monitors and the blockage monitors and they were fantastic. Speedwise were sowing the beans at between 8 and 10 k's an hour and they, they that was at 150 kilos the hectare with 100 kilos of MAP as startup. So it was putting a lot of product out and uh, it, it, it was, yeah, it was, apart from just these bits of pod that were getting stuck, um, which wasn't all that often, but yeah, uh, it was just, yeah, selling beans as a breeze, which I know for everyone with every cedar that the beans are the thing that gives, you know, that's what gives the most trouble. So we were very, very impressed. As far as wheat and barley, and canola the metering was perfect and placement well in all the seeds including the beans were, were just exactly where we wanted them uh, the beans were at 40 mil and yeah the, the, everyone was at 40 mil weren't they dad yes uh, and one of the options uh, one of the few options they uh, offer with this machine is is blockage monitors and we feel they're worth their weight in gold. During the most of the season, I think we had about two blockages only. Uh, the blockage monitors worked perfectly. The blockages were, I, I remember in one point, a bit of uh, chip of gravel went down and another one, a, a chip of fertilizer got through. Um, so there were, there were really only about two blockages. The monitor goes off, you go straight to that that tube and find the problem and it solved instantly so you, we just didn't have misses I, I mean the whole thing was a surprise it, it uh, was better than expected uh, in its speed placement of seed uh, one of the good things is you can back into the corners perfectly uh, like you are spraying and and, and take off so there's this the paddock is fully complete uh, and that the lines can prime uh, one of the benefits with this machine because uh, in wetter conditions uh, the row units are taking the weight of the whole machine so it, it will float over as so long as the tractor can get over the country it's putting all the weight on those yeah on the units and we found it floated over uh, um, waterlogged country and was, whether the seed would come up there or not is another question um, yeah that was probably one of the big I, things I think my biggest delight with the machine this year I did most of the sowing while Rob did most of the spraying both ahead of me and, and behind me so he had a fair bit in a bit of work cut out for him and this machine was the catch-up machine. It, it, you just had complete faith that you could you could catch up if we were well. Not that we didn't ever get behind. It, it's just so fast. It's the speed that, that just blew my mind. Yeah, and I mean that that was one of our philosophies of buying this machine was to, so that we didn't uh, call us lazy, but we, we didn't want to have to work all night and. We, I got up early one night, but it was basically uh, one morning, but it was basically the whole season was done within daylight hours and 10 hours a day, uh, only, for a, only for a few days, really. And one night I was left just after dark trying to finish a paddock and uh, I thought to myself, I had to refill and I thought to myself, Oh, I haven't brought a torch to look in the bins, and when I open the bins, there's lights in the bins. So, you know, they've thought of all those nice little features. Uh, yeah, we put in 100 hectares this year of uh, just ryegrass and clover, and it, yeah, did a fantastic job. Our main concern was going at 10 inch spacings, uh, not um, been, uh, it been too wide, so we, one paddock we cross sowed and the other paddock we uh, sowed just the one way and uh, in the end we, we don't know if we'd cross sow again, do we, Dad? No, I think our conclusion was that, that the cross sowing wasn't a huge advantage. Um, but 
but by the same token it, it was no great drama to cross so it because it, it all happened so quickly that um, it, it really you know you don't mind spending that bit of extra time doing it in fact you're quite you're almost looking forward to spending a little bit more time in the machine because it's so, so fun to drive we're not going to necessarily say either way uh, whether to go tine or, or disc one thing with us down here we're in basalt country we have got rock we have got hub, uh, heavy uh, stubble loads and we're trying to not burn so we've gone with the the, the disc cedar to, to get through those stubble loads secondly you're either trying to with a tine disturb the seed and incorporate your chemicals we're, we're trying to not disturb any of the seed and leave sleeping dogs lie to a degree and uh, I've had a few people ask me that question and they say their agronomist is saying don't go with a disc machine go with a tine machine and uh, yeah, my advice to them is yeah, yeah perhaps uh, yeah, go with your heart and if, if this is where you a disc is where you're wanting to go maybe uh, yeah we, we haven't had any problem with the um, you, machine have if, we if you if you feel you want to go with a disc you, you might have to change your agronomist to one that agrees with you same thing it's a lot of people are set on time machines and and a lot are set on discs we weren't necessarily set either way but we've uh, it, for our country and our conditions uh, we we think this disc machine is, is the way to go uh, moving parts uh, this thing has got very few of them and uh, yeah low maintenance we just yeah we, we love it and we can't really f like find any faults I'd just say man up and do it uh, uh, people would say yeah, everyone hates their own machine like whether it be disc or time there's always a fault in in whatever machine you're running uh, and yeah I actually asked this question to Michael Horsch himself and, and I said why everyone hates their own machine why will I hate this cedar and he said well, well you won't and uh, I, I'd agree with him it's fan it is fantastic Exactly the same as any tug along sprayer. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it is very good for our tight roads, and we've got trees down our roads, and uh, a river to have to cross and getting across the bridge. It, it's it a, a very neat machine, uh, and for backing into the sheds or anything. And Rob even lets me drive it. <laughs> no, put, putting this machine on, I did it this morning, and it took me. A, about four minutes uh, and it's only got uh, four or five hoses at the back with your return lines and very very simple just one pin uh, uh, it hasn't got a hydraulic jack but it's a very good uh, jack system on it two-stage jack and uh, yeah very simple to hook up it's not a half-day procedure well it, it's it's typical of a beautiful German engineering. It's possibly the best engineered machine on the property. Um, we've had absolutely no breakages, and it's yeah, it's pretty much faultless. A fabulous machine. Yeah, um, yeah, and the other thing is, I mean, the the bin's been. Uh, plastic moulded bins. We haven't had any trouble with them. They're they're easy to clean out. Uh, yeah, been absolutely no no trouble.